side by side because otherwise it was just having question 16 I've tried to put this side by side because otherwise it was just having to go down too far. Okay, some inner invertebrate species can be used as indicator species with, to access, assess sorry, not access, the level of pollution by organic waste in freshwater systems. Species within the taxa, mayflies, uh, stoneflies and caddisflies are particularly sensitive to, pop, to pollution. These were your indicator species from Nat 5. You should kind of recognise these. These taxa are referred to collectively as EPT taxa. The presence of these species can be used to assess water pollution levels by calculating an EPT index using the formula shown. The value obtained allows the water quality to be assessed using table one. So we have a formula, we have the table. Okay, then it goes up to this bit. A study sampling the invertebrate species in a stretch of river and the results are shown in table two. And the question is, the data suggests the water quality of this river is. So you do have to do a fair bit of work and you actually have to do all of the reading, which sometimes you don't have to do. So we are looking, first of all, for the taxa that are in the EPT. So mayflies, stoneflies, caddisflies. OK, here's a stonefly. Here's a caddisfly. Here's a mayfly. OK, so that is all of the EPT ones that we have. So our EPT index equal to three times 100. OK, divided by total number of taxa present, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three times 100 divided by seven, plug all that in, gives me 42.8. OK, let's have a look here. 42.8 would put me here in the good, and so therefore it's B. OK, another one I've had to split into two sides so we can see what's going on. The smaller T tortrix is a moth that is an economically important pest of tea plants in Japan. Uh, Honmai has a number of different stages. These are larvae from egg to adult. Viruses that infect crop pests have potential use in controlling pest populations. So we're looking at a form of biological control. A study compared the infection and killing of your moth by two viruses, X and Y. Mean survival time after infection for each larval stage was measured and the results are shown in the table. So this is our, how long did they survive after they were infected? Uninfected larvae were then released onto tea plants that had either X or Y or no virus on their leaves. And the percentage of infection was measured in the graph. So here, here's our percentage of infection over here. Which of the following conclusions can be drawn from this information? We are looking for X and Y transmission rate and virulence. Okay, so let's work out what each of these are showing. Right, on the table, this is how long they survived, mean survival time, plus or minus, are, are kind of um, standard for her. Okay, so what we have here is on the first insect development, it's 18.9 plus or minus 0.6, was how long they survived with virus X. It was only 5.8 with virus Y, and if you look all the way down here, pretty much the same. This one is much, much, much more virulent, okay? Nasty, killing them off. Now let's look on the other side. This is the percentage infection. So how many of each larvae is then being infected? So that is to do with transmission. This is the other way around. This one, definitely X has higher transmission. So then we just have to look at our answers and get something that works for this. So we want X to be the high transmission. And we want Y to be the high virulence. So that has to be B. OK, parthenogenesis is most likely to be common in environments with A. Right, so parthenogenesis is where you have a cloning of your of what's going on. So to clone, you basically have to be somewhere where we are expecting not a lot of pressure to change because otherwise that would be a disadvantage because all you're doing then is using exactly the same DNA on a kind of tried and tested, no chance to change. So we're looking for somewhere where there's no need for that and where you've not got an increase in mutation rate and things like that going on. So what we're looking for is cool climate and low parasite density. OK, now I feel that question 19 is very close to question 18. Asexual reproduction is most likely to be a successful reproductive strategy in. 
So this has to be somewhere where you're looking at a niche which is just not changing because you're not changing and you're not got an opportunity for there to be evolution or any selective pressure which may allow for selection of better suited individuals. So we are looking yet again at narrow, stable niche, which is the same really as question 18. Question 20. The black grouse male is larger and more brightly coloured than the female and competes with other males at legs. Which of the following pairs of characters, sorry, features are characteristic of this species? So we're looking at monogamy versus polygamy and we're looking at sexual dimorphism versus reversed sexual dimorphism. Okay, sexual dimorphism is where the male is larger, more brightly coloured. So it's that. Okay, reversed would have been the other way around. So we have sexual dimorphism. And then what we're told here is that they compete with other males. So therefore that is going to be a change of partners. So we're looking at polygamy. And there's your answer. Which of the following conversions is catalyzed by reverse transcriptase? Okay, so back at higher, DNA to RNA to protein. This is transcription. And this is translation. And this was the central dogma of biology. But, because we thought there is never a way that this is going to not be the thing. But things change, you find things out, and the whole thing about science is you go, right, I now know something new. Let's see how we can change what we're deciding as the model then. Okay, so transcriptase must be, have something to do with transcription. It's an enzyme that does something to do with transcription. And reverse means I'm going to go this way. So DNA to RNA. A. Okay. Question 22. The figure represents a structure of a Zika virus. Um, you've got the capsid coat, the genome in the middle, and then you have a measurement here. Which row in the table describes the structure of a Zika virus? Okay, so we have the capsid, that is the protein coat, you just need to know that. Um, and the genome is in the, in the centre and that's the nucleic acid. So we're still on for A and B. So the diameter in metres. Right, now the, you have been given a, a conversion here, which is nice of them, um, but that only takes you to millimetres and you need to go to metres. So I would actually kind of go the other way around. So I would go millimetres in metre. Okay, that's, that's 10 to the minus 3 is our conversion for that. Okay, and then we go to micrometres. That's another 1,000, so that's 10 to the minus 6. And then nanometres is 10 to the minus 9. So, and I do think this is dodgy scientific notation. That should be 4 times 10 to the minus 9, not 40. Yeah, sorry, to the minus 10. Um, but they've given us it at 40, because it's 40 nanometers that they have up here. So 40 nanometers in meters is this one. Um, but you can use this one. This just takes you to millimeters. You just then have to do the extra minus 3. Okay, so that's why they've put in the minus 6, just to make you go the wrong way with it. The correct answer is B. Okay, um, I hate trying to say this one out, I just can't manage it. I always end up just going with the Bill Hartz, which was the old name, which I know I shouldn't. Um, but this is one of the ones you're supposed to know a definition for, basically. It is an endoparasite, which causes this. So we'll get rid of the ectoparasite, which is also an arthropod. So you definitely don't want that inside you. Um, and not that you really want any endoparasite, but our options are then an amoeba, a nematode, or a... Platy Helminth, and it is this. It is a flatworm that causes this particular disease in humans. So, D. Question 24. Cholera is a disease which causes diarrhoea and is potentially fatal. It is transmitted through the consumption of food or water contaminated by the bacterium Vibrio cholera. It often has a higher instance in refugee camps than in the surrounding countryside. Which of the following measures is not, not in bold, appropriate for reducing the instance of cholera in refugee camps? So they tell you that it's the disease caused by diarrhoea um, and you're told it's transmitted through the consumption of food or water contaminated by the bacteria. Okay, so you're looking here at things that could actually improve what's going on. And basically the one that doesn't work for this is improve vector control because we haven't got a vector as such. We've got food or water consumption, so it's moving through infected ones of that. Increased sanitation definitely would improve it. It's saying would not be appropriate. That would be 
decreased population density, well, that basically means that you've got less chance of passing things on and reduced cost for cholera vaccines. That would always work, so it's A. The last question of the multiple choice. The scatter plot shows the results obtained when life expectancy at birth was plotted against age at first reproduction for 24 species of mammals of different sizes. Okay. Which of the following conclusions can be drawn from the data? An increase in life expectancy causes an increase in the age of first reproduction. Now this, this should automatically be causing massive, should be causing definitely uh, alarm bells because what we're looking at here is the idea that correlation does not mean causation. Okay. And this one says increase in life expectancy causes an increase in the age of first reproduction. You have no information on that at all. We it it's linked. Okay, there is definitely a link. Life expectancy as it increases in this direction, age at first reproduction is also increasing, but you don't know the cause. It's a correlation, not a causation. B, an increase in the age of first reproduction causes an increase in life expectancy, exactly what we've just said for 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 E. And in fact, you could argue these are both exactly the same answer. So neither of them could be right anyway, even if you weren't sure. Okay, larger animals have a longer life expectancy. I have no information on this at all. I don't know what that is. You know, is that an elephant? Is that a mouse? You have no information. Okay. Um, so C, life expectancy and age at first reproduction are correlated Absolutely, that is a nice trend line going up through that, so D. And that's you.